here today with Minister Bonnie Poirier. Mm -hmm. Bonnie is a minister, her ministry is a ministry of St. Francis of Assisi. Yes. And, and Bonnie, St. Francis of Assisi is actually who the Pope took his name from. Tell us about how that happened. I gotta tell you, that was a, probably a miracle. Pope Francis taking St. Francis of Assisi's name is more than that. He is living as Jesus lived because St. Francis of Assisi lived as Jesus lived. We have this Pope who was bringing all of these people back to church. He is bringing people to an awareness that all life is sacred. And the fact that he has done this is opening up so many people to so many possibilities in honoring, respecting, and caring for God's creation. Now we have to admit, the Roman Catholic Church has always been on the forefront when it comes to care and welfare. Whenever there's a disaster, whenever there is a, anything in need, you have the Roman Catholic Church there handing out whether it's food, clothing, whatever absolutely, the needs are. Yeah. So for Pope Francis to take it many steps further, if we all just start looking to him, we can create a much better world. <laughs>things that I truly appreciate about St. Francis of Assisi is that he lived as Jesus lived. There were no big ornaments around him, no fancy clothings were on his body. He was a day laborer to help fund his ministry. He was with the people. He helped heal the people who were sick with leprosy and other diseases. But when it came to animals, he would preach to the trees. But what I love, you mentioned the story about the wolf. This wolf was originally terrorizing this village and the people were terrified of this wolf. They really wanted the wolf to die because they were terrified. But they went to Francis and Francis went off with this wolf started talking with this wolf and come to find out he realized this wolf was hungry. So he went back to the village and said, you know what, I think if you left some food for him that we could all have a more peaceable kingdom here. And they did. And the wolf and the people lived together peacefully. When we take their habitat away, where do they go? How do they live? Because they're like us. They mourn the loss when there is a death. They get excited when there is a birth. They're a family. They take care of each other. They look out for each other. And that is something when we take over their habitat, what stressors do we place on their lives? The Bible has so many indicators of how we are to live with animals. For instance, in 2 Samuel, we have where Nathan is talking to David about a rich man and a poor man, and this poor man and how he cared for this one little ewe lamb. That's all he had in this world. And it drank from his cup and ate from his plate and slept in his arms, and he treated this lamb as a daughter. This lamb grew up with his children. That's in the Bible. And when we have the ark, God could have told him, hey, you know what, we're going to have a big flood, we're going to destroy everything that's on the face of this earth. Let's gather our architects and our engineers and our plumbers to get things going again. No, he gathered up the animals two by two. I want to thank you, Bonnie, for being a guest on our show. It's always wonderful in working with you in the community and seeing what you've done for people who are grieving for their pets and your vision about how we should interact and just the ministry is just a great thing that you've done for New Orleans. Thank you. We'll be right back.